Amazon Prime new TV show Citadel has just dropped its first two episodes, and throughout this video we are going to be giving the first looks at the brand new show backed by the Russo brothers without spoilers. The studios put a lot into it with the series apparently costing roughly 42 million per episode. Aims to capture the global appeal of shows like Squid, Game Money, Heist, and Love is Blind and become a potential franchise with international spin-offs. The series unabashedly draws from its influences with nods to James Bond, Mission Impossible, The Bourne Movies and countless other spy films. As someone well versed in the genre, I will delve into these potential references, as well as the original works that may have inspired them. However, the show's origins lie not with the writer, director, or producer, but with Amazon Studios head Jennifer Salka, who approached AGBO, the production company of Anthony and Joe Russo, with a business plan. The resulting product reveals the drawbacks of this top-down approach and a reportedly chaotic production, including extensive reshoots, a showrunner switch, and a shortened episode order. These factors are evident in the credits, with the pilot's teleplay attributed to five screenwriters. The execution of Citadel feels like a choppy, generic blockbuster by numbers, despite its nine-figure budget, which is not reflected in the chintzy CGI. Quality may not be a top priority for Amazon, as they have already greenlit a second season of Citadel along with spin-off shows set in Italy and India. However, for a sprawling interconnected universe to be successful, a solid foundation is needed, and Citadel fails to provide that. Summarizing Citadel seems redundant, as the story is technically original but could be derived from a word cloud of a spy thriller Wikipedia page. The titular organization is an international syndicate dealing with Cold War era threats such as loose nuclear weapons. The top two agents, Mason, Richard Madden, and Nadia, Priyanka Chopda Jonas, share a sexual tension communicated through brain-dead banter instead of genuine chemistry. A wise-cracking techie assists them behind the scenes as they face off against a posh, ice-cold Brit. These cookie-cutter roles are filled by Stanley Tucci and Leslie Manville, respectively, with only these two actors seeming to recognize the silliness around them and hamming it up accordingly. There are hints of a stronger series on the premise. Tucci explains that intelligence organizations tied to nation-states have started wars, assassinated world leaders, and killed innocents, so Citadel was founded to serve only humanity's interests. Fortunately the series does not have the style of jokes and idiotic comedy that Marvel Studios has been adopting in the films and series. Or super egocentric characters who do everything as a joke without giving a sense of risk of reality or a situation where everything is as easy and banal as breathing. This could potentially lead to socio-political critique, but the setup feels more like a cynical play for transnational appeal than a hard look at real-life surveillance work and the media's glamorization of it. Manticore, Citadel's foil, is supposedly funded by a coalition of oligarchs, but it acts more like an obligatory antagonist than a symbol of extreme wealth's corrosive impact. It is not surprising, given that the show is a product of Jeff Bezos Incorporated. Even if you're willing to settle for a cliched and unambitious show, Citadel don't disappoints on every level. The series manages to captivate its audience until the very end, leaving them eager to find out what happens in the next episodes. As a result, the first two episodes leave a positive impression on viewers. The show's ability to maintain the audience's interest is commendable. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the episodes. Then hopefully I see you next time you take care yourself. Cheers.